Hi, my name is Greg and I work for the New Client Services Department for LACERT. In this course, we will create a very simple return. This simulation is meant to display program functions that will be common in most returns and to show some basic navigation of the tax program. The taxpayer will be a single individual and have one source of income, a W-2. We will display this information later when we enter the data in the client file. The first thing we need to do is to create this client's tax file. This client is an individual tax filer, so we need to be in the individual module when we create this client's file. The program is not currently in the individual module. The title line of the tax program indicates which tax module you're in. To change tax modules, select Client, Tax Type, then select the tax type to open. In this case, we will select Individual. Now that we are in the individual tax module, we can create this 1040 client. To create a new client, select the Add a Client icon on the toolbar. Next, we need to select a client number for this client. This number can be any alphanumeric character up to eight characters long. And for this simulation, we will be numbering this client Hall. Type Hall in the Client Number field, and then select OK. You are now presented with Screen 1. This is the Client Information screen where all of the client's personal identifying information is entered. The very first section on this screen is the resident status. You may be tempted to use this drop down and select a state, but a time saver in the program is that when you enter the client's address lower down on this screen, this field will auto populate using the state in the address as the resident state. So for now, we will leave this field blank. The next section is the electronic return section. This is selected by default due to an option I have set in this informational text explains why this is selected by default. We plan to e-file this return, so again, nothing to change in this section. This next section is the filing status. By selecting this drop-down, you could see all of the statuses available. In this simulation, the taxpayer is single, so again, we'll leave this as is. Now is a good time to demonstrate the Jump To options in the left column. Some of these data screens can be very long. You can use the slide bar on the right of these screens to scroll down to the section needed, but there is an easier way. On each of the data entry screens, there is a column on the left. In that column, you can select a section that will jump to that section of the data entry screen. I'm ready to enter the Taxpayer Information. To jump to that selection, select Taxpayer Information on the left. Now that we've selected that section, that section is now at the top. We can begin to enter the taxpayer's information. Before we enter the taxpayer's information, I want to point out these warnings indicated by the red exclamation mark next to the section name. These warnings are being triggered by the electronic filing selected above. If this file was not marked for electronic filing, these warnings would not appear. If you hover above one of these exclamation marks, you will see the items that are causing this warning. These warnings are hyperlinks and can be selected to jump to that data field causing the warning. Now we're going to enter the client information. Enter the first name, the last name, the social security number, occupation, and date of birth. Notice now that there are no warnings next to the taxpayer information, now that we've entered this information. Now we need to enter the taxpayer's address. Select address on the left to jump to that section. Enter the taxpayer's street address, enter the city, state, and finally the zip code. Now that we've entered the address information, the address warning is no longer showing. Earlier, I mentioned skipping the resident state status dropdown. Let's look at what is in the section now that we've entered the address. Select resident status on the left to jump up to that section. You can see the state is filled in and is the state that we entered in the address section. There is one more section to complete on the client information screen, the miscellaneous info section. Select miscellaneous info on the left. This is the section where, among other things, the preparer is selected. Select the preparer drop down to see the list of available preparers. Select the preparer on the return, Peggy Preparer. That completes the client information screen. The next screen we need to get to is the screen where we will enter the W-2 information. Look at the bottom of the program. There are some tabs shown there. These tabs will start showing up indicating that there is some data on that screen. The contents tab is always there, but as we enter more data into this client file, the screens that have data will have an associated tab at the bottom. This is a quick way to jump from screen to screen if those screens have data. 
We need to get to the Contents tab to find the Data Entry screen to enter the W-2 information. Select the Contents tab at the bottom. This is the Table of Contents screen. It is a list of all of the screens available for data entry. The screen where the W-2 information is entered is in the Income section, specifically Screen 10 in that section. Select Screen 10, Wages, Salaries, Tips. Let's look at the layout of this data entry screen. Some data entry screens have a Grid Entry section, as well as an Interactive Input section. You may use either section to enter the data, the result is the same. Select the Employer Name field in the Grid section and enter the employer name. Notice the Interactive Input section below now has the same employer name entered in the Grid Entry section. Now select the Wages field and enter the wages from the W-2. The Social Security wages and Medicare wages are filled in automatically. The Social Security withholding and Medicare withholding are filled in using the IRS tables. These fields can be adjusted as needed. Also notice that we now have e-file warnings on the left. You can hover over the warning like we saw on screen 1 to see the field that's causing the warning. In this case, the EIN and the address of the employer are missing. We will correct this soon. Select the federal withholding and enter that amount from the W-2. These pieces of data entered are now in the grid entry screen but also below in the interactive input screen. You may have noticed that the grid entry section does not have the employer EIN or the address information input fields. These are only in the interactive input section. Select the employer identification number field and then enter the EIN. Now select the street address field and enter the address of the employer. Now enter the city, now the state, and finally the zip code. Now that we have the employer information complete, the e-file warnings are gone. Even though this client has only one W-2, I want to show a time-saving feature that's in the program. When you enter an employer name and address, that information is added to a table that keeps this information available for future use. To demonstrate this, I want to add a second W-2 for this tax client. To do so, select Add on the left. Now we have a second W-2. To demonstrate the table feature, type in the same employer name as on the first W-2. Notice the EIN and the address of the employer have auto-completed. This can save time when entering data. All we had to do was enter the employer name. The EIN and the address fill in automatically. The data in these tables is added automatically so there's no extra step to add the information to the table. You are building these tables every time you enter data into the program. Now back to this client's data. He has only the one W-2 so we need to delete this second W-2 on the return. To do so, select the W-2 line to be deleted, then select the delete button to remove this W-2. Then select yes to confirm the delete. That's really all there is to completing a simple 1040. Now let's look at the results of our hard work. Select the Forms tab towards the top left of the program. This is the Forms tab, and this is where you can review the information on the return. Let's look at the layout of this tab. On the left, there's a section called Form. This is all the forms that are available for a 1040 in the LACERT tax program. You may use this scroll bar to scroll and see all of those forms. My personal preference is to limit that view to only show the forms that are part of the return. To limit this view, deselect the Show All box. Now, only the forms that are part of the return are listed. You can put back the check mark if you need to, but it's really just your choice of personal preference. You'll notice that the form created is a 1040EZ. This is a result of the tax data we entered. The program will select the simplest form by default. Some preparers do not want to present their clients with an EZ form. You can force the tax program to suppress the 1040EZ and the 1040A forms and force the 1040 to print. To make this option change, select Settings, then select Options. The tab that has this ability to suppress the forms is the Tax Return tab. Select the Tax Return tab. Now select the Federal Tax Options in the left column. Locate the 1040A line and select Suppress. Complete the same action on Form 1040EZ. Select OK to save the options. And now the form that will be generated and printed with this client return is the 1040 form. A helpful tool in the LACERT tax program is the Diagnostics tab. Select the Diagnostics tab. This tab displays a diagnostic on the client file and will indicate areas of the return that may need your attention. 
There are three types of diagnostics, fatal, critical, and informational. If there is a fatal or a critical diagnostic, you will not be able to e-file that return. The program will not allow you to transmit a return with fatal or critical diagnostics. The informational diagnostics are just that, information that we want to bring to your attention. These diagnostics are hyperlinks, and if the diagnostic references a field in the client data, you can select the hyperlink and the program will jump to that data entry screen. In this example, there is a critical diagnostic. It references the fact that there is no EFIN number in the firm information section of the options. Select that hyperlink. This diagnostic is not part of the client detail, so there is no jump to input. Select OK to close this message. If we read the diagnostic, the instructions indicate to open the options and go to the firm info tab and add in the EFIN. Select Settings, Options, select the Firm Info tab. Select the EFIN field and enter the EFIN 123456. Select OK. Notice now that that critical diagnostic is gone and we are left only with the informational diagnostics. Let's look at the diagnostic that references the Affordable Care Act. When we selected the client data, we did not make any entry for the ACA. Select the hyperlinked diagnostic that references the ACA. By selecting that link, the program jumped to the ACA entry screen. This taxpayer had coverage for the entire year, so we need to put a 1 in this field. Enter a 1 in this field. Now let's go back to the Diagnostics tab. Select the Diagnostics tab. Notice now the ACA diagnostic is no longer mentioned. As we've just seen, these diagnostics can help you review the return. Now that you've completed this simulation, you should be able to create a simple 1040. You should also be able to jump to different sections of each data entry screen and know how to navigate to different data entry screens.